Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's April 6th. These are your headlines. First up, Connecticut surprised us all and stocked trophy lake trout in five ponds last week. We also heard about the first fresh schoolies possibly in Rhode Island. And last but not least, we have opening day of trout season hitting this weekend. That's April 8th in Rhode Island and Connecticut. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've got a couple of news items to throw you away. The first one, of course, is opening day of trout season, which is going to hit Rhode Island and Connecticut this weekend. That's Saturday, April 8th at 6 a.m. Um, in Rhode Island, that means that all those trout stocked waters are now going to be open to fishing. Um, they've been closed since the beginning of March, and it's a momentous occasion. A lot of people consider it to be the beginning, the unofficial beginning of fishing season, and lots of people get out there and uh, make their first cast of the year on opening day. If past opening days are any kind of an indicator, we are going to have an awesome one this year, just like we always do. DEM does a phenomenal job stocking, and uh, I think you're going to find that to be the case again this year. At the same time, over in Connecticut, the harvest season will end at the same exact moment. That's 6 a.m. on Saturday, April 8th, and then you can begin keeping some of these fish if that's something that you'd like to do. Also, at the same time, like we talked about, those lake trout that were stocked in those five ponds, I got the five ponds right here. Um, that's Coventry Lake, Crystal Lake, Tyler Lake, Squans Pond, and Bigelow Pond. Those are kind of scattered throughout the state. These fish were big. They're trophy sized fish. They averaged 30 inches. Um, some of them are 24 inches, some of them are as big as 36 inches, and they range in size from about 6 pounds to 18 pounds. Those are some trophy sized fish. I've caught some big lake trout in my life, but uh, never one that was 18 pounds. So, um, that's something that uh, you guys can definitely get excited about, and as of this Saturday, you can take one home if you want to. Uh, the last thing that we're going to talk about in the news portion of this is, of course, the giveaway, which is ongoing. I uh, got a really good photo this week, one that's definitely a major contender, so you do have your work cut out for you. But um, I'm sure you guys are at least somewhat familiar with how this whole thing works now. you just got to send those photos in to me at deanderson at thefisherman.com or text them to the number on the screen, and I'll pick my favorite. This one's going to wrap up on May 17th. I'm giving away a ounce and a half mini darter that I designed and built. And um, also going to give away some Yuzuri lures to a second place prize winner. And, uh, you know, once we wrap this one up again on the 17th, we'll probably start another one. And uh, we'll see who wins. Moving over into Massachusetts, we're going to start things off with James Juice. Just out here finishing up my trout season. Eh, I might get a couple other trips in, but probably not many. A little before work action. Well, I'm feeling better out on the water and the fishing has been very good things have definitely picked up the past week or so uh, plenty of trout going on uh, the bass fishing and carp fishing i've heard about the pike fishing that's been happening as well uh, and it seems some of the Herring runs are starting to see some of their first herring come into the rivers up here. Myself, personally, I did quite a bit of scouting over the weekend and seen it for myself. Uh, so we're getting close to striper time and still that holdover bite is on fire. Um, everybody's got to get out and do their work get after it and start taking care of business all right dave that's about it from up here all is well spring is upon us let the fishing games begin now we're going to head down from the north shore down through the boston area where the stocking trucks have really been hitting it hard in that you know metro boston area and we're hearing great reports of trout fishing in that area. Also, the bass guys have been doing well. We got another photo from Mike Dixon of another big bass that he got, this one in the dark. Um, 
and you know fishing in that general area just a lot of good bass fishing coming out of that region right now heading out onto the cape we're hearing the same thing trout fishing has been very good and the bass fishing has been very good and something that I have noticed over the last few years is that in these herring ponds you know we're obviously we're not into the spawning time yet but as the month progresses as April progresses some of those fish and especially in the shallower ponds are going to start to get up on the beds but these herring ponds seem to kind of hold off that spawn a little bit longer. I think there's just so much forage in the area that some of these fish just kind of sit back and, uh, you know, hold off on the spawn a little bit just to cash in on the, again, on that abundant forage. So that's something you guys can uh, hang your hats on when these fish get on the beds because personally, I don't like to fish for a bedding bass and maybe you're like me, maybe you're not, but... Um, that's something that I do that's worked for me in the past. Another thing that's going to be happening soon is the broodstock browns are going to get stocked out on the Cape. That could be as soon as next week as far as when I'm hearing through the grapevine. Got some reliable sources out there so we'll have to see. Um, and we're also hearing about more holdover striped bass action out on the Cape. So lots of fishing going on on the Cape. Lots of, uh, lots of different species to catch. As we head inland, uh, we'll get one more report here in the Massachusetts thing. We're going to toss it over now to Roy Leva. Hey Dave, Roy Leva here with this week's Western Mass Report. Uh, it feels a little chilly today after yesterday's warm spell. Um, this, this, the fishing's just been crazy. It just keeps getting better and better. Uh, right now, just about anything you want to fish for, it's on. Uh, this past week, I've gotten some really nice largemouth bass, some really nice crappie, some really nice yellow perch, some really nice trout. Um, and I'm not even talking about the ones that they've stocked, just holdover fish. Uh, but the trucks continue to roll out here in Western Mass. Uh, most of the bass have been um, in the wood, either near it or in it. Um, my guess is all the cold nights, warm days, just warms up that wood and just brings the water temperature up a little bit more around there. So they've been very active. Uh, it's all been jigs and, 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 and chatter baits for me, uh, really smoking them on the jackhammer. Um, and then the Bico jig with the trailer. Other than that, you know, Wachusett Reservoir opened up this, this past Saturday. Um, I haven't been, but from the reports, they've been doing really good with the Lakers. So like I said, uh, it's 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 all open now, man. It just keeps getting better and better as we get in for push further into April. So I'll catch you guys next week. Um, hopefully, I got a few things going on. I don't know how much fishing I'll be doing next week, but I'm um, I'm gonna be dying if I don't. Moving over into Rhode Island, the big news of course is opening day, which again is this Saturday, April 8th at 6 a.m. Uh, opening day is a big thing in Rhode Island. It's the last state in southern New England that has an official opening day. There's 85 ponds in Rhode Island that are heavily stocked and they are all going to be open for business uh, as of 6, 6 a.m. this Saturday. Uh, so that's going to be that's going to be a great fishery. That's going to be something year after year. It's always a it's it's always very productive. We see lots of good fish caught on that day. Uh, for a little bit more on that and some of the other things that are going on in the eastern half of Rhode Island, let's toss it over now to TJ Kopecki. Hey, thanks Dave. Hey guys, nice to be back today. As you can see behind me, I'm coming to you straight from Clearwater, Florida. I'm here on vacation, also doing some fishing, meeting up with some family. But uh, I still got a great report for you all uh, from back home. I've been talking to a couple of my angler friends who have been fishing there. And uh, I've been told that uh, the yellow perch spawn has uh, come up and these fish have come into the shallows uh, and they've uh, pretty much been uh, feeding very well and uh, spawning. Um, also the, the bass bite has come back to life, uh, which we kind of figured would do there because the temperatures went up. Uh, even the nighttime temperatures are staying up near 45 degrees, which is keeping that water nice and warm in those ponds. Uh, I did speak with uh, Jeff Sullivan. A uh, good friend of mine, uh, he's been doing well with the perch uh, and the bass still uh, in the local ponds in the East Bay. Uh, the, the tog bite, a little slow, but um, we're sure it's going to rebound too with that warmer weather uh, up in the 60s uh, to warm up that water just to get it to that 50 degree mark. Uh, Manny at Lucky Bait let us know that uh, they're gearing up 
for the uh, trout opener on Saturday. Uh, they will be open on Saturday at 5 a.m. and Sunday at 5 a.m. and close at 6 p.m. Uh, Monday through Friday they will be open uh, 6 to 6. Uh, you can always go to their website or their Facebook page uh, just if you forget the hours that I told you now. Um, other than that, uh, he will also have some crabs for uh, on Friday for you uh, people that want to try fishing for the tog. Um, I really think that those fish are still concentrated to that deeper water um, at, before they move into the bays to do their uh, spawn. So, uh, but it's not, it's worth a try just to get out there and see what you can do. I did see uh, a couple of guys that had caught some fish uh, locally. Um, I mean, they were a keeper size, but uh, hey, you know, it's, they're getting out there that you gotta try in order to know. Uh, other than that, uh, a lot of good things going on here in this pond. Uh, basically, uh, I've been fishing for bass uh, and there, there are a lot of micro bass in these ponds. Uh, I was told that there are some snook in here, which got landlocked. Uh, during some hurricane time. This pond is connected to Old Tampa Bay. Uh, so during the hurricanes when it flooded over, uh, a lot of mullet got in here and some, uh, a whole bunch of different species uh, which you can actually fish for. But uh, I'll be getting back out in the salt this week and I uh, hope to talk to you guys uh, next, next week. Tight lines. Now moving to the west from there, uh, one thing that we did here is, um, you know, the, the beginning of blackfish season was April 1st and it kind of started off with a whimper but uh, we did see a keeper fish taken by uh, one of our friends over there at New England Kayak um, posted a picture he said his first fish of the year was a keeper sized fish um, I also had the pleasure of fishing with the bearded wonder Mr. Captain Rob Taylor this week and I asked him when he starts his blackfish charters and he said he waits until the second half of the month. He said, yeah, you could go out now and catch some fish, but um, you know, you're, it's gonna be a struggle typically. You're gonna you know, fish most of the day. You might get four, you might get six fish, and one or two of those might be a keeper. He suggests waiting until the second half of the month when things become a little more reliable and more of those keeper-sized fish move inshore. Uh, I consider Rob to be one of the better fishermen in Rhode Island, so I definitely trust his word, and uh, you know, it might be the best way to go. Uh, last thing we're hearing in Rhode Island is some really good largemouth bass fishing and some smallmouth bass fishing as well. You can see here, I took a smallmouth yesterday on the jerkbait. The jerkbait fishing is starting to wind down. We're, the ponds are starting to warm up a little bit, but it's still a viable option. There are still fish to be caught, especially in those deeper or larger ponds that take a little bit longer to warm up. Um, but also, we're seeing a lot more action on wake baits now, especially after dark. Uh, I've seen some really nice fish taken after dark, um, especially on wake baits that replicate like a sunfish, any kind of panfish. Um, so that's something else that's a, it's a pretty reliable bite. Of course, you're not always going to be out there catching tons of fish on swim baits, but it's a good way to get them. It's a good way to get a big one, and uh, right now is the time to do it. And that's what I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. Hey guys, I realized I forgot to add one thing into the uh, Rhode Island report, and that was news of uh, some schoolie bass running along the beaches uh, in South County. Not a large number of fish, and definitely not large sized fish, but um, carrying some sea lice, which, you know, the thought is that they're fresh fish. I, I have other feelings about it. It probably came out of the Thames River or something like that, but nevertheless, um, it is good news, it's progress, and, um, you know, there's some schooly bass moving along the ocean beaches in Rhode Island. Just wanted to make sure I let you guys know that. Moving over into Connecticut, um, the harvest season will begin, as we talked about in the intro, as of Saturday. That will be 6 a.m. You can start harvesting these fish. You can harvest those lake trout that were stocked into all those ponds. Um, you can keep fish from a lot of different bodies of water. One thing I definitely recommend, especially in Connecticut, because there's so many different little idiosyncrasies to their uh, trout regulations. Just Go on Deep's website the night before and just make sure you're up on uh, the limits for the body of water that you're going to be fishing because they do vary 
wildly uh, throughout the state. So definitely check that out. Um, one place that's been fishing really well is the Farmington River. Uh, we've had some warmer weather, definitely some bug hatches going on. Uh, Derek is down with the flu, poor guy. So uh, join me in wishing him a speedy recovery and hopefully we'll get a detailed report from him next week because, man, the guy really knows that place. But we are hearing some good reports from the Farmington, so that's one place that you can uh, you can go and have feel like you got a really good shot of hooking up. Um, moving over toward the Connecticut River, uh, but seeing more stripers coming out of the Connecticut River this week. I don't believe those are going to be fresh fish, though. I think those are uh, fish that are just coming out of the tributaries, coming out of their little holdover coves and just starting to become more active as the herring move in, as the water warms up. And the, the really good thing is, is that they're not all being caught on worms. A lot of these fish are actually being caught on flies or being caught on soft plastics. So they are active enough to chase down artificial baits, which makes it much more exciting. Uh, still hearing about good pike fishing up inside some of the coves and up toward like Haddam area. And lots and lots of panfish from white perch and yellow perch to crappie to uh, sunfish. They're all being taken right now. Uh, one thing I did hear from Rowan is that the carp fishing is a little behind schedule right now. So you may want to hold off on that for a week or two. But other than that, the Connecticut River is fishing re really well. Speaking of Rowan, let's toss it over to him now and get a little rundown on what he's seeing. Hey, everybody. Uh, now we're coming into some really good proper spring weather and perhaps the biggest news at the moment in the Connecticut River is uh, the arrival of some of the first American shad of the year. Uh, they're making it all the way up to Massachusetts already. Um, expect to find those pushing up the tributaries, uh, the major ones being the Farmington, the Chicopee, and in the main stem of the river itself. Um, they are not in high abundance yet. You're going to want to fish a little bit slow and deep. The river is going to be coming up from all the snow melt coming down from the north. Um, but yeah, it's the first shad of the year. That's always a big thing. Uh, expect migratory stripers to be right on their heels and whatever holdover bass are in the system uh, to get a lot more active with those shad and herring coming around. Uh, so that's certainly one of the things I look forward to most this time of year. Um, but I'm also really focused on carp. That's really getting active. Uh, as the floodplain starts to fill up with all that snow melt that's coming down, uh, fish will push up into the shallows and even into flooded woods and try and seek out any warmth. So any of the sunny days that we get, uh, there will be big carp pushing up into the shallows. And that's something I try and do with my clients as much as possible this time of year because you could get dozens and dozens of shots in a day at, at carp uh, up to and exceeding 20 pounds. Um, and that's an exceptional bite that happens pretty much just in the Connecticut River Valley um, and I'll be on that for at least the next few weeks and possibly in early May but get out there enjoy this new wonderful spring weather that we're finally getting a good solid taste of now and uh, get after it subscribe to the fisherman magazine today and compete in the dream boat fishing challenge it's the fisherman subscriber only season-long region-wide multi-species fishing competition to win a Steigercraft and many more prizes subscribe fish win Heading west out of the Connecticut River Valley, you know, there's a few, there's a, quite a few bodies of water that are stocked with trout between there and the western part of the state. A lot of fish being taken in that area. Uh, have not heard of any fresh striped bass action in the central part of the sound, although we have heard of some supposedly fresh fish uh, off some of the beaches out west. Um, those fish supposedly carrying some sea lice. I have my doubts about whether those fish really migrated all the way up from the south somewhere. I think they probably came out of the Housatonic or the Quinnipiac or some other place and just, you know, picked up some lice on the way and uh, were caught along the beaches. But, you know, the reports are what they are and uh, there's been some fish taken out front. So that's exciting. That's progress. That means the season is going the way we want it to go and, it won't, you know, it's a shorter time period between what we've got now and, you know, the fish just populate in the entire area, and that's exciting to me. Um, but most of the people that are heading west for stripers are heading into the Housatonic. The Housatonic got kicked up another notch this week. We're seeing more fish. We're seeing better fish again, and we're just seeing a, you know, a better uh, rhythm to the catch right now, especially at night. The guys jigging at night are just getting more and more fish. More of those larger fish are being taken on soft plastics. It's a great time of year to get up into the hoosie. The herring are probably starting to show up. I haven't really actually heard that, but man, they got to be. I've seen them in other places, so they got to be there. And um, for a little more on that and some other fisheries that are happening out in the Western Sound, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World.
Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. The freshwater's fishing well and the saltwater. We've seen stripers in slot and some over slot now coming, some, coming from some really tight areas and some local rivers, you know, all the way back up in back bays on the higher flood tides. There's alewives around, bluebacks, there's some peanut bunker. I've seen a lot in Nauk Harbor. Guys fishing all the way up to Wall Street, you know, paddle tails, finesse fish, small spooks. You can definitely up your offerings fishing, you know, these, you know, herring runs from, you know, Greenwich all the way up to the Housatonic. Guys fishing the Hoosie at night are throwing SPs, cold snipers, you know, unweighted sluggos, reeling them slow at night. We've seen some really nice fish. There's fish pouring out of the river, so short beach. This is a good time of year for you fly guys, throwing the fly rod, you know, wading the short beach sandbar or, or the Audubon side. I haven't seen too many flounder yet. Uh, that should pick up, you know, a lot of guys don't have their boat in. But if you don't have your boat in yet, you can definitely fish from shore. You know, the Saugatuck River, Nog Harbor, and the Housatonic. Freshwater still fishing good, same old rivers. You know, Mill River, Mianus, Nog River got stock, so it's been fishing really good. We have trout worms, we have night crawlers, mealworms, shiners, sandworms in stock, and uh, it's fishing season. It's time to get your boat ready, get in the water, have fun, and then all you freshwater guys, the Saugatuck Reservoir opens up this Saturday. So thanks and good luck. And that's what I have for you guys in Connecticut this week, but before we wrap up the reports, let's take a little flight down to Marina Pez Vela and hear what's happening down in Costa Rica. Hey there guys, how's it going? Hello from Costa Rica, this is Ben Gilmore from Marina Pez Vela. The fishing down here right now guys, we had some red hot inshore fishing. The snook have been biting real good. We got some big Pacific black snook running right now. Lots of fish in the 15 to 30 pound range. If you didn't know already, Costa Rica is home to the world record snook, just a shade under 60 pounds. And this is the place to come and catch one guys. Along the beaches and the rocks, we also got a really nice rooster fish bite going on right now. Just the other day, we landed eight trophy rooster fish in one day, just insane fishing. Offshore, we had blue marlin, lots and lots of sailfish, plus dorados, some big bulls included in that, and some yellowfin tuna. Guys, the weather is hot. Just check out the blue sky behind me. It's beautiful down here in Costa Rica, and we would love to see you down here soon. Come and give us a, a call. Ben Gilmore, Jackpot Sport Fishing. And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully you're going to find that useful. Hopefully it's going to inspire you to get out there. Lots of different fisheries to participate in right now. we got opening day this weekend. I mean, it's like prime time. It's, it's that time of year when you just can't come up with a good excuse not to go fishing. So get out there, take some pictures, send them in. We'll get you in the magazine. Maybe you'll win something. Um, if you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine, I highly recommend heading over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. You're going to get a full sample of what we offer. We cover the entire region from Delaware all the way up to Maine and every fishery you can think of in between there and freshwater, saltwater, fly, surf, offshore, it's all covered. Uh, so check us out there. If you're still not convinced, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every, every time we post something new. I appreciate you guys for watching. And we'll see you next week.